Section 5.5.7, Sentencing Statutes and Guidelines. Hello, I'm Dr. Adam McKee, and today we're going to explore the fascinating world of sentencing statutes and guidelines from my book, Criminal Justice, An Overview of the System. We'll dive into how lawmakers shape punishments for crimes, how judges use these guidelines, and the impact this system has on sentencing in the United States. Let's get started. In the U.S., the process of criminal sentencing is mainly in the hands of legislative bodies. This means that lawmakers, not judges, are the ones who decide what punishments should be given for specific crimes. They do this by passing sentencing statutes or creating sentencing guidelines. These rules are then used by judges to determine the appropriate punishment for someone who has been convicted of a crime. To give you a clearer picture, let's talk about the federal sentencing guidelines. These guidelines were developed to address concerns about inconsistent and unfair sentencing practices. Before these guidelines, similar crimes could result in very different sentences, depending on the judge. The guidelines aim to provide consistency by using a point system that takes into account the seriousness of the crime and the offender's criminal history. Here's how the point system works. Each crime is assigned a certain number of points based on its severity. Additional points can be added for things like prior criminal history or if the crime involved aggravating factors, such as the use of a weapon. Conversely, points can be subtracted for mitigating factors, such as if the offender showed remorse or played a minor role in the crime. This system helps ensure that similar crimes receive similar sentences, promoting fairness and consistency. The guidelines cover a wide range of offenses, from drug crimes to white-collar crimes to violent offenses. They're not just a one-size-fits-all approach, they allow for some flexibility based on the details of each case. However, this system hasn't been without its critics. Some argue that the guidelines are too rigid and don't allow judges to consider the unique circumstances of each case. This brings us to a significant change that happened in 2005. The Supreme Court, in a case called United States v. Booker, ruled that these guidelines should be advisory rather than mandatory. This means that while judges still have to consider the guidelines, they are not bound to follow them strictly. They can use their discretion to decide on a fair sentence based on the specifics of each case. Despite the controversy and criticism, the guidelines remain a crucial part of the federal criminal justice system. They have significantly impacted how sentences are handed out in the United States. By providing a structured framework, they help maintain some level of consistency and fairness in sentencing even with the added flexibility allowed by the Booker decision. In summary, sentencing statutes and guidelines are essential tools in the U.S. legal system. They help ensure that justice is applied consistently while still allowing for individual circumstances to be considered. This balance is vital for maintaining public trust in the criminal justice system. I hope this gives you a clearer understanding of how sentencing works in the U.S. If you found this explanation helpful, please give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and feel free to leave any questions you have in the comments. I'd love to hear from you and help answer any more questions you might have about the justice system. Thanks for watching.